Final unit, Algebra 2B, 12-1. Just an introductory sort of a lesson, getting us ready for trig. Trig's coming. Now, when you guys sign up for pre-calculus, what you're really signing up for is a class called trigonometry. Back in the day, they used to just call it trigonometry. Now they call it pre-calculus, just so the students know, aha, this is a prerequisite in order to move on towards uh, calculus. So, having said that, I'm a nerd. I just think it's so sad when students don't ever take Cal. Because for me, all my math that I ever, I ever took prior to Cal kind of came together and then I went, aha, I see where it all makes sense now because calculus is amazing. There you go. Thank you for letting me vent my nerd or nerdy inner side. Okay, anyways, here we go. Um, Basic graph, x-axis, y-axis, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. I don't think that's mind-blowing to any of you. Now here comes the new material. You're going to hear me call it a spinner. Now, if you've ever played the game of Twister, that's what I'm envisioning. It's just hit that spinner. And uh, it just goes around and around. It never detaches itself from the spinner board. That's why I refer to it as a spinner. It's attached right there in the center of the board, okay? and um, now, when you take the class, they're not going to call it a spinner in your packet. Um, they're going to call it in standard position, which means you always start here. So I just connected it to the game of spinner. You would never start it right there again. You would just hit the darn thing playing twister uh, wherever it ends up. But in the game of trig, you got to start right here every time. That'll make sense down the road. Just Understand that that's a law. And then it's, they will also refer to it as the initial side. So when you see initial side, don't panic. When you see standard position, don't panic. When you hear me say spinner, don't panic. Just understand you will always start right there. Now, if I take this and I say, okay, I want you to spin it 150 degrees, there is an implied plus there because it's not negative. If it's a positive, that means you're going to spin the spinner up. Now, every chunk, like from here to here, you guys have taken geometry, is 90 degrees. So if I went swing and I spun that thing 150 degrees and I'm semi-accurate, it would go this way. There's 90. I need to go an additional 60, I'm just guessing, and it would stop right there. Now, part of your homework is spin the spinner and then de determine what quadrant you're in. So obviously I'm in quadrant two. No big deal, right? Well, I'm going to use a green marker, and I'm going to let's consider negative uh, 300 degrees. Okay. Well, where do I start? Always here. What does that negative mean? It means you're simply going to go down. So don't think of it as a negative degree measure. Think of it as a positive degree measure spun in the downward direction. Okay. I know you you're, you're, you guys are hit with negatives. It's just a positive 300 degree spin down. So I take my big old thumb, hit it down. Every chunk is 90. 90 plus 90 is 180. 180 plus 90 is 270, which helps me understand how much farther I need to go to be semi-accurate. I need to go about 30 degrees more, and then my spinner would stop right there. I'd end up in the first quadrant. I know my drawing is getting a little bit messy, um, but... Let's try one more and then I'll, I'll uh, erase it and I'll teach a couple more things. So how about 270? Well, first of all, there's an implied positive there. I'm going to start my spinner hop. Why? Because that's where I always start. Positive means up. 270, I'd go 90, 90, uh-oh, and I'd stop right smack dab right on my y-axis. So the question is, is that in quadrant three or four, it's in neither. It's splitting a quadrant right in half. This is called a quadrantal angle. So when they ask you to uh, you know, determine what quadrant it's in, if it's on the axis, it's, it, it's not in any quadrant. It's called a quadrantal. It's got a special little name. I'm going to pause this for a second. So the only thing I haven't covered yet is this term, coterminal angles. What that means is they are going to stop at exact 
same spot. So let's just tackle this one. See, that says, all right, spin your spinner 200 degrees. Well, there's my spinner. A lot of students ask, well, how long do I draw my spinner? Right now, don't worry about it. Make it semi-long, just so it's a nice big spinner. And that means I have to go up 200. This is my initial spin. So I go, poing, and I go like this. There's 180, and I need to go 20 degrees farther, which is not very far, and then it stops. So what they want you to do is understand this term, coterminal. That means they want you to find one negative spin that will land right on top of this, and then they want you to find another positive one, different than 200, that um, will land right on top of 200. So let's tackle the negative one first, because I think this one's pretty easy. That just means start here, calculate what that is. Well, it's a good time to start making little notes as long as you start spinning these things. For example, we spun at 200, and I said 180 plus 20. Now, there are different ways of doing this, but one student would just simply go, well, I'm just going to subtract that from 360. So they're going to go 360 minus 200, and they're going to get 160, but because we spun it down, it has to be negative. A different student would say, well, if this is 20, and this is the whole thing's 90, this chunk has to be 70. This obviously is 90. And so I spun it this direction, 90 plus 70, which is negative 160. A different way of looking at it. It's not wrong, just different. Now, the problem also asks us to find a positive one that lands here too. Now, you can't just go, well, 200. because That's the same number as the problem. So what you're going to do is you're going to start here. You want a positive one, which means you're going to spin it up. And here's the trick. Can't stop there. But if you, what you have to do is go around a full circle. I'll say that again, a full circle. I'll say it one more time, a full circle. What that means is you take your original spin, and then you add a full circle, which is 360, and that'd be 560. All right, so that's how you would do a positive one, okay? Now, I'm going to pause it one more time. All right, grand finale. Now, this is a little bit different because the original spin is negative. It says negative 310, so I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go like this. I know that's 270. How much farther do I need to go? 40. So it's practically halfway, and I'm going to stop. Remember I said keep track of your little chunks? It's going to be helpful. Well, um, because the, the original is negative, to find the positive, I think that would be pretty simple just to go, aha, I'm going to spin it up. And it's going to stop right on top of that one if I spin it 50. How did I figure that out? Well, this is 40. Take that away from 90, I got 50. So my positive spin is going to be 50. Now, remember, the original spin over here that I raised was positive. Now, this one's negative. What we have to do to continue in the negative direction is start here again, go down. Can't just put the original as the answer, they want a different one. So we have to go around 360 more degrees. So we got to take the original negative 310 and then add another negative 360, and that would be negative 670 degrees. So if the original is negative, you're going to take the original and just add a negative 360 to it. I wish I wouldn't have raised this, but if the original is positive, you're going to spin it that positive direction then add another 360 to it. I hope you picked up on that little pattern.